In Japanese for beginners, we learned that if you convert a verb to its te form and then add kudasai to the end of it, it's a way of asking someone to please do a verb for you. Uh, but this can come across a little rude, just like in English. If you say, please clean the kitchen, that can kind of come across as being a little like demanding, uh, commanding, and a little bit rude. Like if I were to say that to someone older than me or like someone in a superior position to me, please clean the kitchen. Like that's rude, right? <laughs> and it's kind of the same in Japanese to use te kudasai with people who are of higher status than you. So I'm going to teach you a way of asking people to do something for you more diplomatically, more politely, um, if these people are superior to you. And we're also going to cover how to be less polite in asking people to do things for you. Basically, alternatives to te kudasai. So the distinction here is te kudasai is please do this verb, whereas we're going to cover would you please do this verb for me. So the way we do that is with the helper verbs itadakemas and kuremas. So Itadakemas on its own is the uh, potential form, the can-do version of itadakimas, which you may know is the thing you say before you eat. It literally means like to partake. So it means like I can partake. So it's more like, can you partake in doing this verb? <laughs> Basically is like literally what that means, but functionally that's not exactly what it means. It's more just like politely, would you please do this for me? Could, could you please do this for me? And as for kudemas, we just covered that a couple lessons ago. It means to do something. Um, and if I, the speaker, am benefiting from it, it is kuremas. So if I'm asking you to do something for me, it would be kuremas because I, the speaker, am going to benefit from it. And next we're going to review masenka from, again, Japanese for Beginners, last series. Uh, if you change a verb to its masenka version, you're saying, wouldn't you please, or wouldn't you like to <laughs> do this verb for me, please? It kind of turns it into a very polite, uh, suggestive sort of question. So if it's itadakemasen ka or kudemasen ka, it becomes uh, wouldn't you or won't you partake in doing these verbs for me? So there are three basic levels of um, these helper verbs that we can add to the te form of a verb if you want to ask someone to please do this verb for you. So if you say itadakemasen ka, after a te form of a verb, it's would you please do this for me? This is like the most diplomatic, the most polite, like You'd say this to people that are um, higher up than you. Whereas if you add kudemasen ka to the end of a te form of a verb, that's more for people in your inner circle, but it's still very polite. So you might speak this way to like your teacher or your friends or like um, your parents even, if, if you're like polite with your parents, uh, older people that you know. Um, the itadakemasen ka is more for people you don't know very well, people that are not in your inner circle, but uh, kudemasen ka is more for people that you, you know, but you know, they're still of higher status than you and you want to be polite. Um, if you add kudenai with a question mark uh, to a te form of a verb, that is for people in your inner circle, um, you know, who you know well, or you know, they're in your inner circle, but you are of higher status than they are, or they are of higher status than you, but you want to be a little rude <laughs> or sassy to them. So now I'm going to show with just one sentence how you can kind of change up the levels of politeness and the levels of like asking someone to do something for you politely versus ask like commanding somebody to do something for you uh, with just the simple question, hey, can you please help me out a little bit? So, chotto tetsudatte itadakemasen ka? Tetsudau is a verb that just means to help. And in its te form, it's tetsudatte. So this would be the very polite version. Um, excuse me, would you please lend me a hand? This is the kind of uh, form I would ask somebody that I, I don't know, they're not in my inner circle, and I want to be polite. Chutto tetsudatte kuremasen ka? This is uh, a polite way of asking someone in my inner circle for help. So this person is still of higher status than I am, or, you know, I want to place this person on higher status because I am humbly asking this person for help. Um, but it's somebody that I know. If I were to ask, if I were to use this kudemasenka with a stranger, um, it would be a little rude because it's like, you talking to me like we're friends, like you know me? <laughs> You're using the wrong helper verb. It should be itadakemasenka, not kudemasenka, you rude person, you. Um, so kudemasenka is for people in your inner circle. Chotto tetsudatte kurenai? 
This is more for people in my inner circle that I'm either of equal status with, like we're just we're friends, we're the same age, uh, or they're of lower status than I am. But it's like a casual way of asking someone in my inner circle, someone that I know, for help. Chotto tetsudatte. Um, even more casual. It's like little help or little help, please. <laughs> And again, if this is with people I know, if this is with people I'm, I'm of equal status, uh, it's not rude. It's, you know, it's just showing that we're close to each other. But if I used this speech pattern with somebody I don't know very well, or with someone who's of higher status than I am, it would be rude. Versus, ちょっと tetsudatte kudasai. This is a polite yet firm and commanding way of saying, please lend me a hand or please help me. And I'm actually kind of putting a lot on a person by, by saying, please do this thing versus would you please. The would you please, the kuremasenka, the itadakemasenka, that gives people a choice. You know, they, they, it's, it's recognized that like, well, you can say no, I'm asking you, would you please help me. Kudasai is more a command. It's like, please help me. And you're not allowed to give any input on the matter. You're not allowed to say yes or no. Uh, I'm, I'm being polite, technically, because I'm saying kudasai, but I'm kind of not. I'm demanding. Chotto tetsudatte. Hey, you, help me. <laughs> so it's a bit of a rude, authoritative way of demanding help from somebody if it's somebody you don't know. Chotto uh, tetsudatte. Um, if it's somebody I'm tight with in my inner circle and we're cool, then they might not think I'm being rude. But even if it is someone in my inner circle and I'm like, Chotto tetsudatte. Like, that can be kind of rude. It's like, hey, little help, or hey, you, help. <laughs> There's no, like, humility in there anywhere. There's no, like, I'm asking you for help. I'm just like, hey, help me. Then if you add uh, some particles to the end of this, you can add even more character and even more, like, intention, emotionality, uh, relationship, um, closeness, or distance uh, with this question of, can you help me? <laughs> so, ちょっと tetsudatte ne? Um, it's like, help me out, okay? That ne, uh, it's a softer yet still authoritative way of like commanding somebody for help. It's like, I'm commanding you for help, but I'm being nice about it, <laughs> okay? Um, you would use particle ne to show like, this other person understands that I need their help, um, so I don't have to like ask them necessarily. Like, they know, they, they're, they're obligated to help me, we're friends, they're in it for me, you know? Um, or it could be passive aggressive. <laughs> Maybe that person doesn't actually want to help me and I'm like, thanks in advance for helping me. <laughs> so it can have that uh, passive aggressive ring to it too if you want. Ne can kind of do that, but you know, that's more that nuance. Chotto tetsudatte yo. That's more like, come on, help me. <laughs> You're like, hey, you help me. Um, if you add yo to the end of the te form of a verb, it's like, come on, help me. Or come on, ちょっと tetsudatte yo. It's like come on, help me. It's a little whiny and commandy. It's like I'm not gonna take no for an answer. Come on, you should help me. I deserve it. ちょっと tetsudatte kure yo. It's like hey, come on, throw me a freaking bone here. <laughs> so we're using the kureru verb here, but we're using a, a very slangy, very informal, very rough imperative version of it. This kure yo. Um, so it's a whiny and authoritative way of demanding somebody help you and you're implying that this person should feel obligated to do something to you because you're close. Like, come on! I thought we were friends! Help me! <laughs> um, or if it's to somebody you don't know very well, you're being very rude <laughs> to this person. Like, you're looking down at this person. You, you see yourself as superior. So as you can see, depending on which helper verb you use, um, either kudemasenka or itadakemasenka or kurasai even, and depending on like which uh, level of politeness you use these helper verbs and depending on which particles you use, you can really change up your tone, your relationship to the person you're talking to, your intentions, your motivation. Um, you can really play with that a lot. And just like a lot of these other lessons in Nihongotsu, don't feel too tripped up or stuck like you have to use all of these rules. Um, they're there at your disposal, but you can communicate just fine without them. If they're a little too much for you to start incorporating into uh, sentences of your own, just, you know, be on the lookout for them. Notice when you see them come up in character dialogue, for example, because they will quite a bit. To review the model sentences that I covered in this video, check the pinned comment in the comment section or the video description below. And also, hey, don't learn 100% of your Japanese from me. You should be learning from many different resources. And this week I am featuring Japan Kyo. 
Japankyo is a site that features a variety of content for people interested in Japan. It also hosts a podcast called Japan Station that covers a variety of topics from life in Japan, life as a foreigner in Japan, Japanese history, Japanese culture, the history of shoujo manga, the Japanese language. I've found many of these podcast episodes to be a nice, relaxing way to fall asleep at night. And I hope you all check out Japan Kyo too. Thanks for watching, and thank you to all the patrons who support this and other series on my channel. If you want additional study guides, just join at the $2 a month level on Patreon, and you too can receive monthly study guides that go with this series. Regardless, I hope you tune in next week when we cover adding to-i-des at the end of your sentences and what that means. Gambatte ne!